Hi, Sam Sorbo here for The Accidental Homeschooler. And this week we're gonna talk about the second five steps to the consideration of keeping your kids home with you this fall and what that might look like. And so to that end, um, I'll tell you about what we're going to talk about today, but a quick recap of what we talked about last week, and all the videos are here on the Sam Sorbo uh, YouTube channel. Uh, first, you're going to make a list of pros and cons. Then you're going to uh, think about the chores and sort of how to integrate the children into the daily life in the, in the house as opposed to sending them away all day. Um, then you're going to reach out to homeschool groups and try to connect with some people who are already on this journey and maybe they can give you some guidance. Um, and you, you want to feel that there's a sense of community for you to be a part of because you're going to be leaving a school community. So you want to, you want to make sure that there's some place that you can go if that's something that, that you need. I found that it was something that I needed. So I needed to connect with home educators who were already doing this uh, so, that I, so, that I could, so that I could have something to aim at. Oh, that's what that looks like. And that's partly why I do these videos. Um, but you can you can reach into your community. There are plenty of home educators who are just happy to embrace new people and give them some guidance and some advice and some tips and stuff like that. Then you're going to check out some books. Get some books about home education and I've gotten some great responses on that video of people who just went out and ordered that book. There are plenty of books. That was just one example. Um, and, uh, and just sort of read up on it. Take a look. Explore, right? So it's a learning process for the parent. And that's a very important thing because if you think that when you had your kids that you were like, okay, I'm perfect now and I don't need to learn anything because I know how to get this stuff done. Uh, yeah, well, you had some lessons coming to you, right? And so this is one of those, this is, this is a furtherance of that idea. And then finally, I asked you last week to go over your pros and cons list and make a task list to address the pros and the cons so that you could better put them into order. This week we're going to talk about assessing your space and uh, thinking about your needs. Now, I know that that's really hard to do because when we start on this journey, we have no idea how we're going to get there, right? We have a goal in mind, the education of our child. But how, how do we get there? We don't just buy a ticket. So, so what you need to do is you need to say, okay, I'm going to start with this curriculum or this idea of curriculum we're going to be doing uh, we're going to be doing latin because i because i think latin is a really good thing to study and i can get a couple of of uh, beginner latin books just to get us started and um, depending on the ages of your children we're going to start with some workbooks i really recommend just keep it simple when you first get started um, take a look at what other people are doing and see if there's a way to integrate that in into for your for your household okay um, but in terms of assessing your space depending on the ages of your children you might want to say okay we're gonna start every day at the kitchen table well is your kitchen table a mess well then we got to clean that up we got to make a new paradigm people don't leave things on the kitchen table I I did that in my house um, I finally got the entry table that I always wanted a table in my entry and it was really pretty and I didn't want it to get scuffed up. And so, and you know, entry tables, that's where people throw their keys, they throw their phone down, they just, they, they get their gym bag and plop it on the, and no, I made a rule in the house, that table off limits. That table is just for decoration, you're not allowed to put anything on it. You can make the same rules in your house. You can make them, and then you figure out how, how to enforce them. <laughs> is it, well, you, you owe me a quarter if you put your gym bag on the table. Or, um, or, or uh, if you put your gym bag on the table, it will go missing. I don't remember where I put it. I know I moved it because I recall it was on the table and I didn't want to see it there. I played some games. It's true. I played some games with my kids that way. Uh, okay. Um, so, so look around your home and say, okay, where are we going to get this task done? Now. It doesn't have to look like a school. In fact, it shouldn't look like a school. It really shouldn't look like a school. But if you have an area in your house that you could dedicate to home education, it shows how much you value that aspect of your lives together. And so that's, that's an important thing. 
um, on our kitchen table, which tends to get a little messy, but it's, but it's big enough and it's sort of oblong so we can push everything down to one side. Um, there's a Bible because we start every day with the Bible. And so the Bible just sits out and it's filthy. Like it gets all kinds of crud on it because people sh push it around on the table. The table gets dirty. It's, and, and I've just given up the ghost on that. I'm like, okay, this Bible's going to get very worn. And that's actually the sign of a good used Bible, right? Um, so you're starting on this journey. What I'm trying to do in these videos is just to get you to try it on like a coat. What's it going to look like? You will change your plans, but you can't change them if you don't have them. So make them, make a plan. Okay, you know what? Every day we're gonna start at the kitchen table at 9 a.m. and we're gonna start and I'm gonna get a bin to put the workbooks of my kids in because I don't have a place to put it otherwise and I want it to be delineated. I want it to be neat. Um, I've seen, uh, I took over the hall closet. We had two hall closets in that in, in our old house and I took one over and completely revamped all the shelves in it and that was my school closet. And you can see pictures of it online. Um, I can't remember where, but I've, I've shown pictures of it at talks that I've done. Um, and that was my school. So that's where all the school stuff was. And then by the kitchen table, I actually had some extra drawers. And so when the kids were really little, they each got their own drawer to put in little artwork or um, workbook stuff that they were doing, something just to keep it handy right there by the kitchen table. But the textbooks and stuff, they would go back and forth to the, to the hall closet. Um, so that's how I got it done. But I've seen, I've seen people who their entire breakfast nook is just for homeschool. Um, there's the idea that in the center I had a Lazy Susan and so I grabbed my Lazy Susan. I'm like, well, that's useful for something. And I'd never used it before uh, because, I, because we didn't do like big sit down dinners where we needed a Lazy Susan to put all the condiments on or whatever. But I grabbed the Lazy Susan and I, I made a little bin of school supplies. So tape, uh, mini stapler, um, um, some stamp. I put some stamps in there because I liked using stamps for the kids, you know, gold star, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, a bin, uh, a, a cup with all the pens and pencils in it, um, uh, index cards when the kids got a little bit older, right? And so that sat on the Lazy Susan. Eventually we got rid of the Lazy Susan because it, it just, it was fun and then it became, we just passed the bin around, that kind of thing. So there are lots of different ways to get it done and you can start to, to think about what it will look like. And then just understand, it's not set in stone. It's, you're, you're just taking steps. You're just embarking and it'll change on the way. Uh, okay, so, that, so that's the video for today. Tune in again tomorrow. Uh, go to samsorbo.com. Take a look at my books. I'll just flash them up here. Uh, this one is a great book to do for families. It's about teaching our children virtuous characteristics. Um, and uh, you might get something out of it too for yourself. Uh, True Faith came out. Uh, it's doing really well. People are loving it. I'm getting great reviews, so uh, check that out. And, of course, my book that started the whole thing, There Are Your Kids, An Inspirational Journey from Self-Doubter to Home School Advocate. This will convince you that not only should you homeschool your kids, but you can. So, and, uh, of course, keep watching my videos. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you next time on The Accidental Homeschooler with Sam Sorbo. Bye.